So Florida has some of the best bass fishing in the world. It's no secret. Everyone travels down here, especially this time of year in the winter. Everywhere else is frozen, and a lot of people like to make a trip down here to try and catch their new PB or a double-digit bass or whatever they're looking for, just trying to catch some fish when they come down here in the warm weather. Today, I've been bass fishing in Florida for almost five years now. I've never fished in Florida before these past five years. I've been from the Northeast. I've lived up there my entire life. Um, I met my fiance, now fiance, and started coming to Florida and bringing my boat with me and fishing down here in Florida. I learned so much over the times that I've been coming down here, and I wanna break down all these tricks that I've learned from Florida locals I've fished with, friends that I have that live down here, guides I've fished with, and just my fishing experiences on my own. Um, uh, if you're interested in making a trip down here to Florida, you're going to want to watch this entire video. I'm going to break down everything you need to know from bait selection, where you want to fish, how to find the fish, uh, and we're actually going to go out on the water, hopefully put it all together and catch a fish out here and really show you the biggest key on what I like to do when I'm fishing down here in Florida. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to run through is our bait selection and kind of rod and reel selection. So. If you're from the north and you're traveling down here, you probably have a lot of spinning rods and you probably have a lot of lighter casting gear. You do need to invest in some heavier stuff if you're gonna come down here and fish. Not saying you cannot fish with a spinning rod. I just caught a seven pounder minutes ago on a spinning rod down here in Florida. It'll be in a different video, uh, but it does work. You, you can use a spinning rod, you can use some of this other stuff, but there are some techniques that you just cannot touch unless you invest in some heavier gear. Not saying you need to go crazy on it. Um, you can use stuff that you've used up north or get rods that you can use up north. Like this is a seven foot three heavy. I'll fish a frog on this. I'll fish swim jigs on this. Um, I'll fish these gambler big easy or this is a six cents whale swim baits on this. Um, you can literally punch with this rod, do some light punching. But if you hook a 10 pounder in a giant clump of grass and you're under gunned, you're gonna get broken off immediately. Um, these fish are very strong, it's insane. I've lost a, numerous big ones down here that I wish I could get back. Um, a lot of it came from being under gunned for the situation. So I stepped up some of my gear. The other thing is braid is your friend down here. You're gonna wanna use braid almost always if you can get away with it. There's a lot of grass and a lot of the fish live in grass. I do use fluorocarbon a lot um, but if you're fishing around the lily pads, stuff like that, anything like that, braid is the way to go. Texas rigs, stuff like that, I will reaction baits, spinner baits, chatter baits, um, anything in those ballpark, that's what I'm gonna go with the fluorocarbon. Uh, but those are the two setups, um, types of baits that I really like to use and types of lines. Um, so now let's run through the actual bait selection that I like to use down here. I'm not gonna hit every single bait. I'll be here all day. There's a million baits you can use down here in Florida. Pretty much anything will work. Um, I've caught them on jerk baits. I've caught them on swim baits. I've caught them on stuff that I throw up in the Northeast. Um, not everything you use up in the Northeast will work down here, um, but we're gonna hit the high notes here, the baits that you gotta have if you're coming down here. So number one is going to be a, some type of swim bait. This is what I like to use down here. Like I said, a gambler big easy, or this is a six cents whale, 4.5 inch in sungill color. And I have it on a very light six aught weighted EWG hook with a twist lock. That's the way everybody likes to fish them down here. You burn this through the lily pads or you reel it up on top of the water. Any of that grass that's up on the bank, you can just cover a ton of water with this. It's a weedless spinnerbait essentially. Um, so that's one that I really like to have down here. Another alternative to this is just a swim jig. A swim jig is really popular down here uh, and catches a lot of fish. So those are two necessities that you have to have. A chatterbait is another one. Don't have one on today. Um, the lake that I'm fishing, some places it just won't work. So some of these baits you will wanna have. Depends on your cover. Like this lake, known for its emergent cover, docks, um, lily pads, cattails, reeds, stuff like that. I'm gonna fish different baits through that than I would if I'm fishing a lake that's really known for hydrilla, which is a very popular thing down here in Florida. Hydrilla, I'm gonna be using a chatterbait. I'm gonna be using a lipless, a spinnerbait, a swim jig. Those are the baits that I'm gonna use for those types of areas. I don't have some of those baits on today, but they'll work awesome. The baits that I really like to use in some of this emergent cover that I have on are those ones right there. In addition to that, a frog. I also just don't have one of those on today because we had a cold front. Um, I like a fluke, 
I've almost always will fish a fluke in Florida. It's one of the best baits down here. If you're having a hard time getting a bite, that's like a Senko down here. I mean, Senko will work too, but like a fluke, it works amazing. Um, like I said, a Senko will work. Eighth ounce Texas rig weight works good. I have one rigged up over here with a three eighths ounce weight and I'm flipping some heavier cover with it. Um, I've even used it, I have it on a wacky rig right here on a spinning rod. It's not the ideal way to use it, uh, but it does catch a ton of fish down here in Florida. So Senko, many ways will catch fish. Um, a Zoom speed worm. If you don't know what that is, I probably already have the video out or my old one is up, um, whether or not it'll be coming out after this video. The Zoom speed worm is an awesome one. That's probably my number one bait that I would take to Florida. If you're fishing anywhere in Florida, it will work. It catches a ton of fish and you absolutely have to have that one on. Um, so definitely bring that one. And then the last one that I really like to fish is going to be this guy right here, which is going to just be a Texas rig, however you want to rig it, um, whatever bait you want to use, just some type of light Texas rig, 3 16 or a quarter ounce weight, something you can just drag around, throw around, fish all the different types of cover. I have a Sixth Sense Divine Shaky Worm on here, but you can fish anything. You could fish craws, beavers, whatever you want. They'll all work. Um, so that's pretty much it for bait selection. I, like I said, that's a ton of stuff. The last one is top water. I completely forgot about that. A top water, like a prop bait or a walking bait or a whopper plopper. If you love to have fun on a top water bait, Florida is the place to do it. I've caught more bass on top water here than any other state. Uh, it actually is amazing down here. So definitely bring your top waters and a speed worm. Like I said, that's a lot of baits that I just talked about, but if you really want to keep it simple, um, you can keep it simple with some Texas rigs, some some speed worms, your chatter bait, anything you'd use in a pond uh, in some top water. You can have a lot of fun with just some basic baits down here. Let's break down a couple other things you need to know, like where to find the key areas and where to find the bass. And then we're going to show you how to approach these areas out on the water. All right, so I'm going to give up the Florida secret right now. A lot of people don't want to share this. Uh, it's a very key piece of information when fishing in Florida. It's a local secret. Um, it's something that I've learned over my trips down here on how to find bass in Florida. If you look behind me, all we have is cattails. There's a lot of them. There's no bass there. And it's not for uh, a reason because they don't wanna live there or anything like that. Everything in Florida looks good. That's the first mistake that I ran into when I came down here. Everything looks good. You could fish everything in Florida and expect to catch a bass, but there's only bass in certain places and they like to live in packs. That's the other thing I've found. Um, if you find one bass, there will be more in that area. If you catch no bass, it's because there's no bass. Um, the cattails back here, they're great cover, but when you're looking in Florida, the biggest key is to find mixed vegetation. If you find mixed vegetation, that means there is something changing in the bottom down there. So where you typically would find a point or a rocky transition from pea gravel to chunk rock in the Northeast or a different place up in the country, the way to find bottom changes here is to physically look at the grass. And if the more kinds of grass you can find in an area, the more juicy it is. So if you find an area that has pads, behind it, it has cattails. In the middle of the pads, it has arrowheads, what they're called in Florida. They're like weird pointy shaped pads. It has Kissimmee grass mixed in with the pads. Those areas are key. There's a, a definite bottom change there, whether it's hardness, depth, something something because all those grasses can only grow in certain areas of the lake they can only grow in certain hard hardnesses of bottom so that is the biggest key if you are looking in florida if you want to shortcut your fishing in florida by tenfold just do that and you'll catch fish it might not catch you the biggest bass in the world it might not be the biggest secret if you're just looking to catch a ton of fish if you look for the most amount of vegetation that you can find mixed types that's the biggest key and you'll be catching fish almost instantly in those areas. If you find a giant pad field that's just pads, you'll be there all day trying to fish that and there might not even be fish there because there's not any change in the bottom. But if you're fishing a giant field of pads and then all of a sudden there's a giant Kissimmee grass patch right in the middle of the pads, that's the area you're gonna to wanna to focus on. So that's the biggest key I can share with you from Florida bass fishing. Now let's put the bait selection and the area selection together. Let's head out on the water and we're gonna show you the last trick to fishing in Florida, whether it's how you retrieve your bait, 
or what to do once you catch a fish. So let's go ahead. We're going to get out on the water and hopefully we'll catch us a couple. All right. So we talked about bait selection and we talked a little bit about how to choose an area. So right here is the area that we've chosen for right now. We might end up moving depending on how good it is. Uh, but like I said, we got a lot of different vegetation. We have lily pads, we have Kissimmee grass, we have reeds way up on the bank, a couple arrowheads scattered in. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this area, which means there's a bottom hardness change like we talked about. Now, I've done a little bit of fishing over the past day or two that we've been down here. I kind of have a little one-two punch going that I know is working, but like I said, you'll have to cycle through some baits or determine what's going on. I know fish are pre-spawn, maybe spawn and post-spawn mixed in there as well, um, but they're mostly pre-spawn fish. I know that they're looking to eat, and they're also looking to stay warm because a cold front just happened. So my bait selection, today we have bluebird skies, no wind, very dead calm conditions. I'm going with a wacky rig. Another one, since we have dead calm conditions and a uh, little bit later today, we'll play around with more, is a topwater. This is actually a prop bait. It's called a devil's horse. Um, but I've been playing around with this one a little bit and it's been fun catching some fish on some topwater, even though it's literally December, about to be January down here. Those fish will still eat topwater. Um, so we're gonna look through this area. We have some green grass in here. A lot of the Kissimmee grass is actually dead this time of year. Um, not dead entirely. It's not like up north where literally the grass dies off and disappears. Um, the grass is still there. It's just, it's very brown and it doesn't hold the same oxygen content and bait that these fish are looking for. But this area, Kissimmee grass looks to be pretty green. There's some very healthy pads coming up. So this is a good area to fish um, while I'm looking around here in Florida. So we're gonna get to fishing. Hopefully we'll catch one along the way. Um, and we're gonna walk you through what you should do when you're fishing in Florida, when you catch a fish, um, how long to stay in an area if it's not working. So right now, um, we're gonna check out this area and give it a good shot. And we're gonna see if we can get any uh, bites in this area. And then hopefully once we do, we'll talk you through the next steps from there. There we go. All right. So we were able to get one on the wacky rig there. Um, what we're doing is we're fishing down this Kissimmee grass edge and it just changed from a Kissimmee grass lily pad mix to just Kissimmee grass. So there's probably a bottom hardness change right there. The other thing I'm keeping in mind is kind of where I'm catching these fish. So I just caught that fish on a Kissimmee grass edge, noted it's not a giant one, uh, but if anyone tells you that Florida's just full of 10 pounders and all you do is catch giant fish, they're lying to you. There are so many 12 inch bass in Florida, it's unbelievable, but they are the key to finding the big ones. So the little ones, especially this time of year, if you're fishing down here in the winter months when they're about to spawn, the little ones are the males and they're gonna find the bedding areas first. So I just caught that fish. That's on a staging area. This is not a bedding area, but I just caught that fish. I know he was on a Kissimmee grass edge. So I'm gonna keep fishing Kissimmee grass edges for a little bit longer and see if I can get some other bites. Uh, the other thing in Florida is when you get a bite, always slow down and fish that area thoroughly. It could be a hundred yard section, um, but like I said, that could have been that bottom hardness change right there or a depth change or whatever it is. There was something that changed right there and there's a reason that fish is there. So there could be more in the area, general vicinity, whatever. There could be big ones with it. There could just be a bunch of small ones. So from here to the end of this Kissimmee grass where it ends on like a big patch down there, this section could be money. So we're gonna keep fishing slowly down through here, and that's the technique in Florida. So I know a lot of places you do the same thing. If you get a bite, you're gonna fish the area more thoroughly, but that's very, very important in Florida, especially because you can't graph the areas down here in Florida. Once you catch one, that's telling you where the fish are. So like I said, it could be whatever is holding that fish there but you just want to extra slow down in those areas. Fishing slow in Florida in general is a great way to get bit.
And we got another one, just like that. Right at the edge of the Kissimmee grass, right where it ends again, there's another change right here. Let's see if we can get this guy in. Again, also not a big one. As soon as that Kissimmee grass ended right there, we get another bite. So there's obviously something down there on the bottom holding those fish there. That's the key to Florida bass fishing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did and want to see another video breaking down some Florida bass fishing baits, check this one out right here. Hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching. We're going to let this guy go. See you, buddy.